It's easy enough to buy a MacBook. Sellers will definitely help you with this, but it's also easy to make a lot of painful mistakes that will make you experience buyer's regret. So today I have 10 of the weirdest mistakes that you don't make them and don't lose money. No matter how pleasant the price tag may seem to you, no matter how the sellers persuade you, never buy Apple devices in an uncertified store and preferably any other devices too, especially expensive. An official certified store sells a licensed product that has an official warranty. But there is another problem that many other stores are silent about. Selling products from the so-called gray or dark market. These are devices that were not produced for your country, not to mention repair devices that may look brand new. Well, or just used. In order not to stumble upon a non-certified store, you should pay attention to the Apple reseller icon on their website. Apple has a wonderful service that will help you find the nearest authorized store, and in these authorized stores, you will find exactly what you're looking for. Although Apple no longer sells them in official stores, but in some retail stores, as well as Amazon, you may find Intel-based MacBook. The point of the problem is that an Intel chip is certainly not a calculator, but also not the M1. The M1 chips are made for MacBooks and iPads, and that makes new devices much more powerful. The transition to Apple Silicon was announced in June 2020. Tim Cook promised that within a few years, new versions of macOS will support Intel Macs. Every year, of course, fewer and fewer apps will support Intel MacBooks. New features will be available only on Apple Silicon. Intel Macs will not support the most interesting of what Apple will come up with. So by getting an Intel MacBook, which is not possible in the official store, you will not only get an old model, but literally lose all the new features in the future for which you paid. But no matter how attractive the power of the new M1 Max may look, there's always a chance to get a wrong model. MacBooks are different and for a reason. Before you buy a Mac, yes, I will say the obvious, you need to understand the purpose of this purchase. And it's a good idea to apply this rule regardless of the thickness of your wallet. For example, a brand new maxed out MacBook Pro can get up to $6,000. Beautiful design, first class specs, you can't think of a better one, right? But are there exactly those tasks in your daily routine where this beast will come in handy? If you need a little, then spend a little. And it's better to invest your money in accessories or even an external hard drive, for example, as a backup for important files. However, you may encounter the opposite situation. The amount of money doesn't allow you to buy something powerful, which is why there is a chance to waste money. Let's say you have 1000 bucks and I need a MacBook on which I want to create 3D and edit videos a lot. And my choice is the base M1 MacBook Air. And after a joyful purchase, you will realize that the MacBook simply cannot handle your workflow 100%. In fact, you need to consider your MacBook as an investment. You're buying a tool and a properly selected tool is the key to success. This video will help you with this, how to get the best MacBook for you, depending on your tasks. Oh, hey, did you choose the base SSD? Well, now you will have to live with it forever because the SSD is welded to other components, so you won't be able to upgrade it. If you are 100% sure that 256 or 512 gigabytes is enough for you, then take it, of course. But if there is even the slightest doubt, it's worth looking at the one terabyte option. It will definitely be enough to have all the necessary apps installed, as well as photos, videos, and documents. I already have a video on the channel where I explain why it's not worth taking a base model with 256 gigabyte SSD. I know how good it feels, but still you should not hold on to your favorite MacBook Pro from 2015. MacBooks are improving for a reason. Don't be afraid to keep up with the times. Seriously. The lack of ports will be solved with a multi-port hub, which will be connected to it no more than once or twice a week. And the new M1 chipsets are mind-blowing in terms of performance and power efficiency. The only thing you will have to sacrifice is Windows. Max on Apple Silicon will not support bootcamp, so you will not be able to run Windows on it. But most apps have good alternatives on macOS, so don't be afraid to upgrade. I'm with you. By the way, a little tip. Check for the factory film on the MacBook box. If it's not there, then it's 100% that the MacBook was either replaced by someone or experienced crazy adventures during transportation. The box has a clear factory film, the first sign of the quality. But it happens that we come to the store and they tell us that this particular MacBook is the only one left. And immediately it turns out that it's cheaper than a new one. At first glance, it sounds like a good deal. Well, they didn't use it, they didn't kick it, they didn't throw it. 
probably, and don't forget about the factory film. In fact, the laptop from the store shelf is literally a used one. It could be there for a long time and many people could test it, scratching it or even dropping it, thereby harming not only the body but also the hardware. It's also worth paying attention to the display, you can get caught on missing pixels, and the battery in such MacBooks is usually very far from brand new. Just imagine, it's charging every day constantly. Yes, it's cheaper on paper, everything seems to be fair, but does the seller's desire to sell the used MacBook coincide with your desire to buy a brand new product? If yes, then okay, but the discount will be not so big. And as we said earlier, your money is an investment in your success, life, work, and most importantly, your happiness. And what a great idea to get a new MacBook with Apple Care somewhere 10 months after the purchase. Let me show you the trick. Apple Care is an optional support, maintenance and repair plan that you can purchase in addition to your Mac's one year limited warranty. While Apple Care has other benefits, the most important one is that it substantially extends your Mac's one year limited warranty by one or two years. Of course, depending on the type of Mac you're buying Apple Care for. Apple Care, not to be confused with Apple Care Plus, can be purchased at any time during the first year of your Mac life. So there is no need to purchase it at the same time as your Mac. In this case, its service life will begin at the same time of purchase. If an accident happens to your Mac, something that the warranty covers, Apple Care will also be cancelled. And it will simply be money for nothing. You probably know the saying, size doesn't matter. It does. Just accept it. It does. With a large screen, you simply have more space. But if you travel a lot, then having this big guy in your backpack all the time will not be the most pleasant thing. Someone will say that it's obvious. I will say that it's not always for everyone. A portable MacBook may be suitable for people who travel a lot. In this case, it's wiser to get at least a 13 or 14 inch display. But if you mostly use a laptop in one place, consider at least a 14 inch model or even a 16 inch one. Yes, yes, I said that it's necessary to buy from official stores, but there is still an option if your budget is very tight. There are a bunch of third party stores that sell brand new Apple devices. All you need to do is take a look at Apple Refurbish, the official place for returned and refurbished Apple products that still come with a warranty but offer a discount. You can usually get a 15% discount off the typical recommended retail price. Today is the day of recommendations, not laws and strict rules. If you want to buy something used and maybe even from a store shelf, then feel free to get it if you are sure. No one is judging you. But let's be honest, we want to spend not only money but also time on something high quality and durable. That is, to invest resources in something we're going to use for a long time. And guys, it's really hard to make tech reviews on a small channel like this. We have a team working on this content. So if you're getting value, smash the super thanks button and support us with a few bucks. And it's also a good investment clicking on this video and smashing the like button so we can produce more helpful stuff for you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.